Welcome in this session. We are going to launch uh, PostgreSQL in cloud, uh, which is the Google Cloud, and it is known as the Cloud SQL in GCP. So you can say this is the logo of Cloud SQL, and, and under the Cloud SQL, we have uh, three relational databases. One is PostgreSQL it's itself, another is MySQL, and the last one in this series is SQL Server. So these three are the managed instances which are available as Cloud SQL, and we are going to directly uh, launch an instance from the Google Cloud Console. So you can see I'm already logged into the Google Console and let me go to the home dashboard. I don't need to go to that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to scroll down and you will be able to see uh, something called as the databases. And oops, let me press escape and you can see you can I'm I'm scrolling down the uh, sidebar and under the databases just scroll down further and you will be able to see something called as SQL you need to have an access to the console so that you can create the required resources in our case we are going to launch PostgreSQL instance so this is the this is the first screen which will appear under the cloud sql instance so you can read it over here cloud sql instances are fully managed relational mysql postgresql and sql server databases so for us the the area of concern is postgresql and we are going to launch the instance so the launching is not a big stuff you just have to click few things and this instance will be up and running the important thing over here is the instances which are supported are just uh, four major version it is 9.6 10 11 12 and 13 i think it's it's five major versions which are available and if you say choose postgresql you need to choose the category of the machine and the version so this is the first uh, uh, so i'll write the instance id so i'll say gcp pg 13 this is the instance ID and the second one is the password and uh, set a password for the uh, default admin user which is postgre this is not the super user the way it it happens in your on premises environment or when you install postgre as infrastructure as a service so uh, this is going to be part of the admin group and it is going to perform a lot of the administrative task but this is not actual postgre so if you just say generate it is going to generate some uh, alpha numerical password i'm going to copy and keep it for uh, reference when we have to use it for uh, uh, for accessing this cloud uh, sql the database version for our interest we are going to launch the latest one which is postgre 13 in our case but uh, in uh, but first postgre 14 is also available but this is not available as of yet over here choose region and uh, journal availabilities though you will be seeing a lot of uh, uh, johns over here these are the different regions which are available so according to your company requirement organization requirement you will be keeping the data into the particular region according to the law uh, and the governances the next one is zone availability do you want the multiple copy of the uh, data to be replicated across multiple zones then you choose this uh, multiple zone which is highly available just in case one of the zone is not available the data will be available in the uh, the uh, next available zone and uh, the it can be filled over to there and it will be available for your application but in this demo we are just saying i just wanted a single zone Customize instance so you can customize your instance as well machine type for our demo a very small lightweight machine is more than enough so if I see standard just one virtual CPU 3.75 gigabytes of RAM this is more than enough the storage SSD which is recommended is, is 
is uh, required i'm going to have just 10 gb of the storage which is more than sufficient for this demo in case you had uh, if you wanted to have enable automatic uh, storage increase you can do it in your uh, production environment or in the environment when uh, your application is uh, going to access it but in in our case this 10 gb is more than enough so I'm not going to auto increment the storage because it is going to be more than sufficient. Encryption, you have two options over here. One is the Google managed key. Otherwise, you have the other option available as well, which is customer managed key. You can choose any one of them. So you have the advanced uh, connect, uh, encryption options also available. For the connections, uh, I'm going to have the uh, public IP enabled in case you wanted to have the connection from inside in a virtual private network you can have the private IP but for our case uh, public IP is more than enough because I'm going to access this particular cloud SQL Postgre instance through my local system backups you can enable the backups so that you can uh, perform point in recovery so uh, if you are not aware there is something called as wall which is uh, write ahead loggy so so uh, before writing the data permanently into the data files it is written to a log file and it is available for recovery for our case we are not going to perform backup and point in recovery for this demo so we are just going to disable it maintenance this is very very important so any kind of maintenance which is related to the the instance if you don't choose a window there will be a particular window which will be applicable across the all the customers in case you wanted to have a particular um, uh, maintenance window you can choose it otherwise uh, uh, Google is going to enforce its own uh, uh, recommended uh, uh, maintenance window. You have the flag uh, in sight and levels. We are not going to discuss more about that. Just go and create the instance. So once the instance is created, we'll see what is going to happen. This is creating and it is going to be available in let's say another uh, 45 seconds or so and what will be uh, most important after this is how we are going to access the PostgreSQL instance in general when we uh, try to access the PostgreSQL from a remote location which is also known as how to enable the remote connectivity you need to add the IP address of the client to pg underscore hba.conf. In that case, in, in managed instance, you do not have the access to the operating system. So there should be some way wherein the firewall will be allowed to access your PostgreSQL instance. So in internally, it is going to update your uh, uh, pg underscore hba.con file only so that uh, remotely uh, the client uh, connections can be established. So this should be available anytime now and uh, what will be of our uh, concern is the connection point wherein we will be having the public IP available so this is coming up and what we need to do is there is something called as add network so this is coming uh, this is like uh, the uh, incoming connections so this is tell, telling like uh, uh, pg underscore hba.conf wherein you say uh, which ip or range of the ip address and which uh, username or the database if they are coming from this ip address they should be allowed connection or not so it is something like that but internally it is the pg underscore hba.con for updation only so when you say uh, add network you are going to add the ip address from which you are going to access this uh, instance so in our case uh, this is my client which i'm going to access through it so i'll just say okay it is uh, still creating once it is created we will be able to do that we will be able to mention the uh, range of the ip address uh, over here and uh, it will be it will be allowed to connect so in general when you try to connect from remote let's say if i'm uh, trying to connect through a uh, 
PG admin client tool I will be mentioning the IP address over here and under the connection I will be mentioning the port the default port is 5432 maintenance database is default one which is postgre the username is also postgre and we will uh, enter the password which we have uh, generated so this is the password let me try to do some of the things ahead of the time but this is not going to actually work as the host name is still getting populated oh my god this is showing three minutes okay created oh great so public ip yes i'm going to mention the name of the uh, i'll say this is client client connection to my postgre instance and this is just a client IP, temporary IP. Oops. Okay, and I'll say done. I'll just say save. So anything coming from this IP will be allowed the connection this is updating it and if you see the users in your managed instance you have one default user which is postgre which is also available for which we have the password and and let me show you the connections let's Go ahead and fill up the details once everything is visible over here. Okay, let's go to the overview part. And uh, this is my public IP, so I'm going to connect through the public IP. I'll fill in the information in the host name or the uh, IP address. This is where my managed instance of Postgre is running. And if I say save, if everything is fine, it should allow me the connection. You can see a connection has been established. And these are the default databases which are available. We have Postgre database available over here. And the another one is Cloud SQL Admin. If you try to connect this, this is not going to allow you the connection. Okay, this is how we create a managed instance in Google Cloud for PostgreSQL, which is really very, very easy. The, the main part to understand over here is once the uh, instance is created, uh, how do you connect? So we are going to connect it from the outside. So we have the public IP address available and uh, under the connections this is very very important you have to allow the incoming connections from outside so you need to mention the ip address or the range of the ip address which is going to connect to your uh, postgre uh, managed in instance in google cloud so i just mentioned one of the uh, dynamic ip of the client which is which uh, dynamically changes so any connection coming from this IP address or the range of IP address will be allowed to connect. And just to verify that uh, it is allowing the connection from the range of the IP address, I launched a PG admin 4. I mentioned the IP public IP address of managed instance user is Postgre and the database uh, is also Postgre and uh, the uh, password was uh, feed in and then it has given us the connection so you can see uh, we have the connection established to the Postgre SQL managed instance under the users you can see that by default there is a user which is created in postgre sql managed instance in google which is postgre and under the databases also you would be able to see that the default postgre database is available we are not going to touch uh, backup replicas and the operations part we are going to see this in upcoming demos so this is just a basic like how to create an instance 
and the important part is how to allow the remote connections which is which is the connections part i hope this is going to help and thank you